Smart home devices can help automate routine tasks that save you time and in some cases even money. But is your smart home secure? In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your smart home network more secure by creating VLANs and firewall rules to govern the devices on your home network. I'll tell you what VLANs and firewalls are and show you step by step everything that I did to set them up using the Ubiquiti Unify controller. By the end of the video, you'll know why you may want to separate the smart home devices from the rest of the devices on your home network and exactly how to do it. On this channel, I cover how tech can make you more productive. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And let's do this. This is a follow-up to an earlier video that I released where I went through my entire Ubiquiti Unify network for faster home internet, including my complete setup and cost, which I'll link to if you want to check it out. In this video, we'll look at how and why I made my home network more secure using VLANs and firewall rules. But what is a VLAN? VLAN stands for Virtual Local Area Network. With one LAN, all of your devices are grouped together and each device has its own IP address within the same subnet so devices can talk to each other and make requests. With VLANs, each is given an ID or a tag which logically groups a network of devices together in their own subnet regardless of the physical network they are connected to. One of the reasons for using VLANs in a home environment is to create a more secure home network. For example, you can group all of your IoT or Internet of Things devices like a smart garage door controller that speaks to the cloud into one VLAN and separate those IoT devices from the devices on your main LAN like smartphones and laptops. If someone hacked the IoT device's cloud service, that could be an entry point to the IoT device on your network and then the hacker could potentially see the other computers on your network. By separating devices using VLANs, you can mitigate this risk. Another reason for using VLANs may be to simply organize the devices on your network. VLANs on their own aren't as useful from a security standpoint unless you impose traffic and firewall rules. Firewall rules are logical controls that determine which types of traffic are allowed in and out of the network, which are accepted and which are dropped. I can use firewall rules to decide what my IoT devices are allowed to communicate with and what can communicate with them. Such rules also ensure that things like my Home Assistant server and Sonos speakers continue to function properly. So far, I've been talking about IoT devices, but let's take a closer look at device types since it may influence how you want to structure your network. Another example of an IoT device is a smart lock that uses the cloud to send and receive commands. This allows me to control the lock when I'm away and outside my home network. So the smart lock falls into the category of an IoT device. I need it to talk to the internet, but I don't need it talking to all of the other devices on my network. Another type of device in your smart home may be one that only talks locally to your home automation server, but doesn't require an internet connection to function. This group of local only devices is sometimes referred to as NOT or network of things. Like IoT, the NOT devices don't need to talk to each other just to my home automation server, Home Assistant. In general, I prefer local-only devices over cloud-based devices where possible. It's not strictly necessary to create separate VLANs for IoT and NOT devices. At the moment, I do not purely out of convenience, but you may want to do so. Generally, the more specific you are with your home network setup, the more secure it can be. Aside from IoT and NOT, I have all of our phones and laptops on the main or default LAN. I also have our security cameras on the default LAN, which I'll address later in this video. Before we dive into how to set up VLANs and firewall rules, a few things to note. I am not a network administrator. Configuring VLANs and firewall rules can be complicated. If you want to deep dive on this subject, I'll link to other videos from folks who are well versed in this area. I am sharing the steps that I took to secure and organize my network since there was no one guide out there that was tailored for my exact setup, which includes Ubiquiti Unified Networking Gear, 
a home assistant server for smart home automations, Sonos speakers, Amazon Echo devices, and more. I'll show you the steps that worked for me and broadly speaking, what may work for you. But before implementing my recommendations, you should consider the exact device setup and needs for your smart home and device environment. I will take you step-by-step step through how to create VLANs and firewall rules using a unified Dream Machine Pro. This will look different if you're using different equipment. Even if you are using Unify, it may look different since they frequently change the user interface. Let me give you the big picture, then I'll go through all the steps. I'm going to create a VLAN to separate the IoT devices on my home network. Then I'll create firewall rules to govern what type of traffic is accepted or dropped. Finally, I'll assign the various Wi-Fi SSIDs in my home to specific networks, the default LAN and IoT, so that each device starts following those VLAN and firewall rules that I created. To start, I'm going to create a virtual network within my physical network for the IoT class of devices. Go to Settings, Networks, then click New Virtual Network. I'll use IoT for the network name. For the subnet host address, we'll use 192.168.20.1 and 24 for the net mask. 192.168.20.1 is the gateway each device will use to get to another subnet. 24 means that the 192.168.20 portion will be the same for the entire subnet since 192, 168, and 20 are 8-bit numbers. The last 8 bits, or the dot .1, will vary for each device. 24 determines how many IP addresses will be available on that subnet. For the VLAN ID, we'll use 20, which corresponds to the 20 in the subnet and just helps keep things organized. I'll enable multicast DNS, but leave IGMP snooping disabled on the IoT network. IGMP snooping pertains to multicast communications and which device may want certain types of messages. If you want all the multicast data from the IoT network to be repeated on other VLANs, then you'll want to disable IGMP snooping on the IoT network. I'm not going to go into the details of unicast versus multicast versus broadcast, but this setting is something you may want to experiment with depending on your devices. When you've got it configured as you like, just hit add. If you wanted a separate VLAN for your NOT devices, you would repeat those steps but you use 192.168.30.1 with 30 for the VLAN ID. Next, we're going to create firewall rules that allow and drop certain traffic across the network. Go to Settings, Security, then click Traffic and Firewall Rules. I'll start by adding the Allow rules and then create the Drop rules. This is because firewall rules are imposed from top to bottom in the Unify controller, so the order does matter. If something is allowed at the top, then it won't be examined against another rule further down. Your networking controller, though, may work differently. The firewall rules that I am setting up are designed for the devices in my home, including that Home Assistant server, Sonos speakers, and Amazon Echo devices. If you use other devices, you'll need to determine the correct configuration and ports required. Okay, let's get started with the first rule, which is to allow all established and related traffic. Broadly speaking, this means that one device can respond to another device when data is requested from it. Click Create Entry, choose LAN, in for the type, and I'll give it the name Allow All Established and Related. Choose Accept for the Action, All Protocols, and check Before Predefined. For the source, click New next to the address group. I'll give this the name All Local Addresses and then add each local address for my setup under the IPv4 address subnet. For me, this is 192.168.1.0/24, 192.168.20.0/24, and 192.168.30.0/24. The first is for my main LAN, the second is for the IoT network. And the third would be for an NOT network, though I'm not actively using that one at the moment. Click Create when you're done. Then select the group you just created, all local addresses, in the source address group. 
For the destination, we'll also select all local addresses. Under Advanced, check the boxes for Established and Related. When you've set it up as you'd like, click Add Rule. Time to create the next rule, this time for the Network Time Protocol, or NTP, which allows devices to get the correct time, and without this, some devices may not work correctly. Click Create Entry, choose LAN N for the type, and give it the name Allow All Local to NTP. Choose Accept for the action, select UDP for the protocol, and check Before Predefined. For the source, select All Local Addresses in the Address Group. For the destination, click New next to Port Group. I'll give it the name NTP Port and add Port 123. Click Create and then select NTP Port for the Port Group. When you're done, click Add Rule. Now, I'll create a rule that allows the devices on the IoT network to communicate with my Home Assistant server. This is only necessary if you have the same Home Automation server. Click Create Entry, choose LAN in for the type, and give it the name Allow IoT to Home Assistant. Choose Accept for the action, All Protocols, and check Before Predefined. Select Network for the source type, and select the IoT network that we created earlier. For the destination, click New next to Address Group and give it the name Home Assistant Server. Add the IP address of your Home Assistant Server and click Create. You could just enter the IP address without creating a Home Assistant Server group, but group names are clearer and keep me organized. Select Home Assistant Server from the Address Group dropdown in Destination, then click Add Rule. Anytime you add a device IP to one of those groups, you should set a fixed IP address for that device to ensure it remains the same and thus continues to work with your firewall rules. To do this, go to Client Devices, click the Device, then Settings, and select Fixed IP Address. Next, we'll create a rule to ensure that Amazon Echo devices on the IoT network can talk to one another, which is useful for things like synchronized multi-room audio. Click Create Entry, choose LAN in for the type, and give it the name Allow Echo to Echo. Choose Accept for the action, All Protocols, and check Before Predefined. Click New next to Source Address Group. I'll give it the name Amazon Echo, add each IP address of my Echo devices, and click Create. Make sure you set a fixed IP address for each of those Echo devices. Select Amazon Echo from the Address Group dropdown for the source and select it again in the Address Group for the destination, then click Add Rule. Now we'll create a rule to ensure casting devices on the default LAN, like smartphones, can talk to Sonos speakers. This requires opening up specific ports. Click Create Entry, choose LAN in for the type, and I'll give it the name Allow Sonos to Default, with default being the name of my main LAN. Choose Accept for the action, All Protocols, and Check Before Predefined. Click New next to Source Address Group. I'll give it the name Sonos Speakers, add each IP address of the Sonos Speakers, and click Create. Once again, you should set each Sonos Speaker to a fixed IP address. Select Sonos Speakers from the Source Address Group. Click New next to the Source Port Group, and create a port group called Sonos Ports. Then add all the ports that Sonos uses, which I'll link to in the video description. Once ready, click Create. Then select Sonos ports for the source port group. For the destination, select Network and then Default, which is the main LAN, since that's where I have the devices that I cast from, like smartphones and laptops. When done, click Add Rule. At this point, I've created all of the Allow rules for my setup. To make my network more secure though, I'm going to add broad drop rules at the bottom of my firewall rules. We'll start with a rule to drop all IoT devices from communicating with devices on my local network. Click Create Entry. I'll give it the name Drop IoT from All Local Addresses. Choose Drop for the Action, All Protocols, and Check Before Predefined. For the source, select the IoT network. For the destination address group, select All Local Addresses, which I created earlier. Then click Add Rule. 
The next drop rule is for security cameras. As mentioned, my security cameras are on my default LAN. It may seem odd to keep cameras on the default LAN, but there can be performance degradation when routing traffic from, in my case, 11 security cameras across virtual networks. To function, each camera talks to the Network Video Recorder, or NVR, for camera stream requests. There is no need for a device outside of my network to start that camera stream, or for the camera itself to start the connection with another device. I can regulate this by denying the camera's outbound traffic using firewall rules. Click Create Entry. I'll give it the name Drop All Other Cameras. Choose Drop for the Action, All Protocols, and check before predefined. Click New next to the source address group. I'll give it the name Cameras and then add the IP address for each of the cameras on my network, then click Create. I also set each camera to a fixed IP address. Select Cameras for the source address group, and for the destination, you'll use any address in any port. All right, that's it for the allow and drop firewall rules from my setup. You may have noticed that there are several other firewall rules listed. A couple refer to an NOT network that I created but I'm not currently using. The idea is that I can separate IoT devices that require an internet connection to function, like my Wi-Fi water heater controller, from NOT devices that do not, like an ESP home device. The additional firewall rules with the lock icon were created automatically by the Unified Controller. This may be different depending on the system that you are using. In order to get devices onto the correct VLAN and following the firewall rules, I need to adjust the Wi-Fi settings. I have separate Wi-Fi SSIDs for my IoT devices and default LAN. Each network uses only the 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz bands, but not both. All of my IoT devices are on the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi SSID, whereas my main devices like phones and laptops are on the 5 GHz Wi-Fi. I allow each Wi-Fi SSID to broadcast on all my access points, but you may prefer something else. Let's take a closer look at my configuration, starting with the Wi-Fi for my IoT devices. I assign this to the IoT network that we created earlier, which corresponds to VLAN ID 20. Under Advanced and Manual, I've set it to only use the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi band, which is what IoT devices typically use. Since my IoT devices tend to be fixed in place, the only other setting that I have enabled is Multicast Enhancement. Taking a look at the Wi-Fi for devices on the default LAN, the setup is a bit different. Here, I'm only using the 5 GHz Wi-Fi band and I have checked BSS transition and fast roaming since devices on my main LAN like smartphones and laptops move around regularly. I do have another Wi-Fi SSID exclusively for the Sonos speakers on my IoT network because in my experience, separating Sonos speakers improves their overall reliability. Finally, I have multicast DNS enabled on all of my networks but I only have IGMP snooping enabled on the default or main LAN. If you followed along and made it this far, you have made your network more secure by isolating IoT devices on their own VLAN and using firewall rules to allow or drop certain types of traffic. Of course, you can do even more to secure your network, including VPNs and port security, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Let me know in the comments if you have additional tips and tricks when it comes to VLANs and firewall rules for a more secure smart home network. If you're interested in my Ubiquiti Unified networking setup for faster internet at home, you'll wanna check out the video here. Hit the like button if you found this helpful and subscribe to the channel for tech reviews and tutorials that help you become more productive. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.